Let's hang out. It is live. What is this, Lady Ada? Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show and tell. We do the show and tell every Wednesday, 7.30. It's me, Lady Ada. With me is Mr. Lady Ada. We are here to be entertained, to be amused, to watch the makers and the community show off their project. This is your time to show us what 3D printing or electronics or soldering or coding or whatever kind of crazy project you're doing. Maybe you're doing some sort of jump park prop project. He's gonna show something cool off. Yeah. And uh, we're gonna hang out. So you, we're gonna call on you. You guys show off what you're doing. Take two or three minutes a piece. Mute your mic when you're done talking. And we'll have to get out of here at 7.50. Yep, and don't forget, all participants on the show and tell, get an as seen on the show and tell sticker if you're on the show and tell. Make sure to email support at adafruit.com. Afterwards, we'll send you a sticker. Let's kick it off with Scott. Welcome back to the US, Scott. We missed you. Hey, thank you. It uh, was quite the trip to Europe, and uh, we had a great time, especially because the weather here was terrible, I hear. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so that was really good. We fixed uh, it before you got back. Yeah, yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. No problem. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've uh, been uh, busy on CircuitPython since I got home. Uh, did uh, some refactoring, uh, which should make it easier for us to have uh, touch and things in different boards. So that, that should be cool. Uh, we also got the Feather M0 Express in the shop, if you don't know. Uh, yeah. Super cool board. It's got uh, Spy Flash, which is for all your Python scripts. I did a lot of work just on the Python, the CircuitPython bundle. So you can just download the zip and get all of the all of our libraries that I'm aware of uh, in one go, which is super cool. And then uh, a couple of people who had, who had bought it um, wanted me to allow you to get uh, access to the NeoPixel that ships on the Express. So I just, uh, the last couple hours, I changed the code so that now your user code can change the color of the pixels. This is just going through like the rainbow cycle. Cool. And then if you control C to whatever, it go back to being a, a status LED, which uh, is, another thing people are really enjoying so far. Yeah, okay, sweet. outstanding. And uh, we'll read this off um, and ask an engineer tonight, but um, kudos to all the Adafruit team members, uh, Scott, Tony D, everyone has been working on this. Um, Carol, who's part of the um, Python Foundation and Project Jupiter and just a ton of other things said, uh, and I'm just going to go to the end of the quote, it's the least frustrating board that I've ever seen for kids. Yay, least frustrating. Yeah, it's super cool. She's been a great uh, source of feedback and one of the reasons I was like, oh, I got to do this. Yeah. All right. Outstanding. Yeah, her, her, her issue requests get managed first, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I, I try to be responsive to uh, the community first anyway. Yep. Okay, All right. Cool. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks for the update. Okay. Thank you. Next up, JP. How's it going? Hey, good. Sorry, I had to unmute my mic there, and I'm very far away using a little trackpad thing. But I think you look it, like you need a cup of coffee. I have a, I have a, um, I have a cup of tea. It's a little late in the day for me for coffee, which is ironic because I've got a coffee-based project here today. Um, so this is my coffee detonator, and it's a project that just uh, launched yesterday on video and today as a guide. Uh, so the story behind this is this is a blasting machine. This is a vintage one from about 1910, and it's used to uh, detonate TNT or dynamite in a mining operation. Uh, the way these work is they have a magneto in them, and they output about 30 to 60 volts of AC at about an amp and a half or two amps. And so that would set about 50 blasting caps in series off, hopefully far away, and blow stuff up. Um, so a friend of mine brought this to me. And he asked me if I could convert it for use as essentially a trigger or a button for some uh, microcontroller projects for an escape room type of thing. And I didn't want to open it up and just kind of put a button in there because that seemed kind of lame. So I decided to build a little circuit on a, uh, I have a little proto board with a um, bridge rectifier and a voltage divider that are on a little feather proto board. You can kind of see it in there. There's better pictures on the guide. And so um, when I go ahead and detonate this, it's going to send the 30 to 60 volts AC down here. It's going to get converted to DC. It's going to get converted down to about 2 to 3 volts of DC. The microcontroller reads that on an analog pin. And then in this application of it, I have one of these little uh, relay uh, power switches, which will send 120 volts back over to my coffee grinder. So let me go ahead and show you it in action. Uh, 
it makes me happy every time. So I set it up to just do five <laughs> seconds of grind at a time. I don't grind beans um, except for when I'm about to use them. So I decided if that was uh, the adequate amount or if you needed another go, you go ahead and give yourself another five seconds worth of grinding. <laughs> And uh, so that I think is, it's kind of a cool use for it. Some people had asked me, well, I'm never going to do this. I said, probably not. It's actually kind of rare to pick up one of these. But part of the idea behind the guide is to show how you can use a uh, sort of higher voltage AC source as a trigger for something on a microcontroller, which can then kind of do anything. This could be how I detonate a password vault, or it could be how you turn on a water pump for a cocktail robot or something like that. Um, so it can be generalized out, and that's kind of the point with a lot of our guides. It's also, Wiley that, Coyote is looking for a job, and now Wiley Coyote, Coyote. Is a barista at Acme Coffee. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you so much, JP. Blow it up. Woo, dynamite. Um, no, I'm Pedro. Hey, guys. How's everybody doing? So yeah. this week's project is inspired by that pretty popular Lego tape video that came out. Mm -hmm. So... PT sent that over and we're like, we could do this in NinjaFlex. So in, in uh, experimenting with that, we discovered that we could actually get NinjaFlex to cling to walls, um, like glass surfaces. So I've got a couple little examples here. Um, acrylic too. Acrylic. There's a little piece uh, of acrylic. I hope it's a fair amount of weight. Hopefully that doesn't fall. That's cool. But pretty interesting property of NinjaFlex if uh, you can get your printer to print it, because it is a challenging thing to print. So we do have a guide. Look at the weight. It kind of came off there. <laughs> We do have a guide on, on kind of kind of some basic things to look out for mm -hmm. when you're uh, 3D printing Ninja Flex. It is one of those, I mean, it's rubber, so it's kind of challenging to print with. Tricky. So yeah. that's kind of why we dedicated a guide just for Ninja Flex stuff. So mm -hmm. this is kind of an achievement of, hey, I was able to print Ninja Flex, even if it's just a flat strip. Right? Exactly, yeah. So um, if you guys have seen, the, the Ninja Flex is uh, super um, versatile in terms of being able to cut it and sew it Yeah, it's onto, really like, soft. Wearables. It has a great kind of grippy texture to it. Mm -hmm. So lots of different applications. We've been doing stuff with NinjaFlex for a while now, and this is kind of one of the interesting things we didn't know you could do with it. Yeah. So we got all the files available and the step by step um, guide on how to get the properties to actually work. Um, did we mention the secret to make all this work is printing it on a heated glass uh, plate? Um, sure. Not a secret anymore. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we talk about that and kind of how to get your kind of first layer that has to be kind of perfect mm -hmm. in order for this to work. And what Lamar was doing there, sticking them together, is actually how we discovered that this worked. When we were storing these away, we noticed that there was a ton of suction happening between these two. So um, you do have to have a clean surface if you get like oil from your fingers on sure. the yeah. window or the glass or whatever. Um, can hinder. Yeah, kind of I actually put them on the bezels of my eye. I can't see it, but I have like little strips over here, so I kind of yeah. decorated my 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 computer here. So definitely a cool way to get these off the floor, so you don't step on them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Real quick, I did an update. Yeah, okay. and you can see the suction right there. Yeah. Is sort of happening. Cool. Very cool. So. Okay, we're gonna play the video tonight. Um, Reminds me, like when I was a kid, there was these little octopus things that you would get. You put a quarter in the machine and you throw it against the window and it yeah. go down. Maybe we'll try to make one of those. Yeah, actually, the time lapse Tuesday, that octopus. I took that clip out of the um, the edit, but you can do that with that yeah. as well. We have it on three D Hangouts. We had a nice kind of long, oh. kind of drawn out yeah. explanation of it. So check All that right. out. If you want to see it? Cool. Thanks so much, Noam Pedro. Yes. All right, we'll go to some of the new folks who have been on the show and tell. So I'll just give people a heads up, or we're going to go to Matt and then Eric. So Matt, unmute your mic and show us your project. Hey, Matt. Hey guys, I'm back. Um, I added some more features to my uh, airsoft gun. Oh, great. I added a uh, remote detonation button for claymores, and it can uh, add. Uh, it can do uh, other things like this light over here. That's great. Well, uh, was on. You asked me to uh, shoot a camera, so I found a way. Yeah, to that's, that's kind of what I want. <laughs> You'll shoot your eye out. <laughs> we just switch over. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think this was a good idea. <laughs> no. No, probably wasn't. All right, Matt. Fire. Now oh, you missed. <laughs> Forgot something. <laughs> uh oh. That's what it likes. That's what it's at yeah, the shooting range, I guess. Keep going. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Oh, man. 
Come on, you can do it. Man, this is like the audition for Sniper. Get closer. <laughs> That's cool. You need to do a little like. Whoa. Little balls. Oh, you yeah, look at that. You don't have to break the cap. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's hitting. Whoa. Let me get closer. All right, well, I've got body armor on, so this is fine. All right, Matt, good work. Thanks. Uh, yeah, we'll send you a, as seen on the show until stick or always gone. Um, we'll have to fight crime. Okay, next up, Eric. Hey, Eric. Hey, guys. Um, I'm just showing you an update on my Dead Moss helmet that I yeah. showed last time. Uh, I remember last time I had the ears done. This time I got the whole face going uh, with about 1,200 NeoPixels soldered together individually. Right. Wow. And then these little brackets that I 3D printed to like hold them in place and keep its shape. So let me flick the switch so you guys can see what. <clears throat> oh my God, that's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> So for the actual face display, I went with a Teensy 3.6, and all the animation saved up on the SD card. That's cool. Outstanding. All right. Well, I keep collecting it. the SC you know, on Show and Tell stickers and keep coming I back. Will. <laughs> Woo! That's a project. Yay. Jeez, 1,200. I know. This is gets scary. Yeah. Um, I was. I'm still working on that guide. Yeah. So as soon yeah, as I, yeah. <laughs> I get that working and get all these photos in, okay. I should have that up. All right. We're going to keep moving. If everyone keep it to a few minutes, we can get everybody in tonight. Next up, Bill. Hey, Bill. Hey, Bill. Hi, folks. How are you? Good. Hey. Glad you can hear me? All good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we, have, uh, we, we have a few, a few dogs here. Uh, we, are, we have two things I want to talk about. One is, real quick, tomorrow at the University of Florida in Gainesville. Uh, we are adapting these guys. So these are my pal scouts. Um, they're just complicated enough that most folks can't um, adapt them with battery interrupters and stuff like that. So we have to pull out the, the various, just run parallel jacks to all their switches. These are like the most popular toy a few years ago. Um, but if you can't press the buttons uh, because you're either uh, unable to move your, your arms or you're in a hospital bed or whatever the reason is, um, they're not very much fun. Um, they're very much fun if, if you can because they learn your name, they learn your favorite color and all this stuff. How neat. And they're only 15 bucks at Target. So they're a great toy to adapt. Yeah. If you, if you screw up, it's 15 bucks, right? So this guy's already done. We also, I put a quarter 20 on the back of his head so I could mount him. It turns out that was very popular because anybody in hospital beds always wants to be able to keep the toys out of the, the way. Yeah. Um, so we're going to do that tomorrow. I've got uh, 30 to 50 folks coming. If any of you guys would like to show up, uh, no and Pedro were invited. They're welcome to drive up to Gainesville. Uh, we're going to adapt these. And the other real quick thing I do want to show is um, your, your buddies. And it's like my hometown is where they are in, in Palm Beach. I grew up in, in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, but they, um, they helped me today. Uh, to work on this project, which is, this is a, um, like, if folks can't grip a, a pen, right, they can, they can yeah. hold on to this, um, but it's got these little, these little um, rings, so these are TPU rings, this one is Ninja Flex, and this is a, a different kind of firmer. Oh, neat, so depending on the number of fingers or how it's going to be yeah. um, held, yeah. you can adjust it, that's good. Exactly, and it just makes it more comfortable, if you're going to wear it all day or for a long time, Fatigue is a very real problem, right? Yeah. So you can also personalize it. You know, you might want to have a different color. You know, you might have absolutely. Yeah, yeah. and you can bend these because they're TP, because these are PLA. You can actually just heat them up and bend them if you need yeah. to. But I had a heck of a time printing um, Ninja Flex today. So I heard I had, you did glass uh, bed is the secret apparently. So it turns out that was not my secret. My secret is clean out the nozzle and gears, and that's a project for Friday, unfortunately. But I did have both Noah and Pedro live on Facebook live today helping me, so I really do appreciate that. And uh, so, so kudos to them. They, they're, they've been great on all this stuff, so thank you. Thank you so much, Bill, and everyone who's watching this live or tuning in later, this is um, one of the best examples of what makers can do to help people. These um, toys are super cheap. 
um, you can uh, make a difference in someone's life. Thank you so much, Bill. And we're, we've got guides to do it on atmakers.org. Uh, our Facebook group's got an invite for tomorrow night. You do have to tell us you're coming so we can have enough pizza. But other than that, everybody's welcome. Even you can come down. It's nice down here. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in Citrus County um, in Inverness, which no one's ever heard of. So I, I, I did my Florida time, but I would like to visit you one day. But it would only be to see Noah and Pedro on you. So there you go. The Everglades were kind of harsh. I was not on top of the food yeah, chain. I, would, I wouldn't choose Citrus County. That would yeah, be. My I didn't choose it either. It yeah. kind of chose me. Okay. All right. Thank you so thank much, you. Bill. All right. We're gonna get Chris, and we're gonna then keep moving on. Hey, Chris, how's it going? Let me your mic and show us your project. We got a couple minutes for each person. Go for it. So I was inspired by uh, Philip Burgess's how-to on the LED curtain. So um, my daughter dances competitively, and I help with the lighting for all the dance props, the very large dance props. So um, let me see if I can do a screen share real quick. This is going to be cool. I can already tell this is going to be cool. <laughs> yeah. Dude, there's nothing like yeah. kid dancing LEDs. Sweet. Well, it's, it's serious because, like, competition is yeah. for real. Uh, this so, is are you able to see the screen share? Right? Yeah. It says applause. Okay, so this is the dance prop. That oh, is a the the wide back. span in the middle, middle of the dance, and that is a 2048 pixel LED screen inspired oh. by Philip's project. Wow. And there's two smaller ones. So, this was the end product which was probably not the best place to start. No, that's okay. Um, this was my not so neat version of his implementation because I don't have um, CNC mills or anything to cut acrylic, but um, got the job done. Smaller panels, some uh, timing because I had to make a nine and a half minute video for the big panel and that was the end product. So I will Stop the screen share, I think. Did I? Sort of, kind of. There you yeah. go. <laughs> okay. So live version. Later implementations involved um, retroing on my own 5G uh, Ethernet Wi-Fi because the 2.4, the first competition we went to had a lot of interference. Yep. 5G. The third one, I added the Wi-Fi router because I needed more power. And... We had a really excellent run, and really quickly. Oh man! Fire this baby up. You must be the most popular parent in the group. Um, can you send us links and photos when you um, get your? I mean, I'm going to give you a sticker if it seems. Yeah. So <laughs> the problem is, every other troop's going to ask you to do the same thing for them. Yeah, this is your full-time job for the rest of your life. So <laughs> the, the theme is queen. Yes. Oh yeah. Now, oh, so cool. we have our, our last competition back at the same venue where I got good video. And the kids are, were on their A game two weeks ago. So I'm hoping that in the end of April, I'm going to be able to buy a good video that has um, the awesome dancers just killing it and the video running at perfect quality. This is everything I love. This is awesome. <laughs> I love it. It's on uh, fire. LEDs and Freddie Mercury. Oh, this is the best thing yeah, ever. So, so that is the actual from the Fade Candies, the, um, the demos, yeah. the, those mm -hmm. fire. It just worked really good with the curtains, which were the shimmery yellow. So I just yeah, went with yeah. it. But, I love uh, it. This is fantastic. All right. Well, send any photos or video when you're ready. And uh, oh, well. if you're going to build more of these, um, we can work out a deal. We can figure out something. Oh, I love it. I love yeah, it. My next, my next stage is to implement interactivity with the dancers during the routine using a connect. That's so cool. So. This is. You guys are going to be on like America's like next great dance talent or something. That's, I don't that's know. That's the name of Show and Tell. Yeah. Show and Tell is going to be a dance show soon. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Chris. Love it. And um, uh, when you email, uh, however many people there in in the dance troupe, um, we'll send out Show and Tell stickers for them too. Great, thanks so much. Oh, thank you. Okay, if everyone can move along, we can still get everyone. Adam, Adam. update us on your electronic microscope. Hey there. Yeah, uh, we have range today. Uh, <laughs> this is a week of finding more problems in the microscope, namely the high vacuum system. Uh, I'm actually going to go portable camera for this one. You might hear a little bit of extra noise because the scope is actually under power for one of the first times. Wow. Woo! 
So uh, the issue is this is my high vacuum gauge, and it should be reading in the green, and it's pegged below negative. So uh -huh. in any case, I gotta, either my vacuum pump's not working, and I have that turned off right now because it's really loud, or I have a big leak somewhere. Um, and to find a leak, you need to be able to kind of see small movements in the gauge, which you can't do if it's pegged at zero. So I found out that there's two, this might be kind of hard to see, uh, just about test points on the back of one of the rotary dials that I can tap into. Yeah. So I've got that hooked up to a multimeter, and if, I'm going to open the valve right now. Uh, if I open the valve to the multimeter, you can see that the voltage starts to uh, increase, okay. which indicates that there's a giant leak somewhere. So okay. instead of having to buy a new high vacuum gauge, which is relatively expensive, I figured out how to find test points in the back of this thing so oh, I can start smart. diagnosis. Um, after this, I'm basically going to be spraying um, helium or hydrogen all around the different vents. And if you get the uh, really light uh, gases close to one of the vents or one of the leaks, and you'll see a spike in vacuum pressure. And that'll, that's how I'm going to have to find this thing, because this every screw or nut you see down here is basically one vacuum seal. And there's, I think, 40 or 50 O-rings inside of this machine total that I have to be able to check each one individually. Wow. And so doing that is going to be somewhat of a challenge, but it's what you need to get high vacuum systems working. And this is something I've had to do on vacuum systems before. Just on those vacuum systems, I've had better gauges and real uh, leak detectors. But I had to make my own for this one. So you're just going to pick up a couple tanks of uh, light gases and then just start spraying. Leak? That's yeah. That's basically how you have to do it. They make they make tools for this, but those tools cost thousands of dollars. And the um, the place I work that has one of these, I can't pull one off the uh, the machine right now. So yeah. that's what I get. Are you just going to go and get like a tank, regular tank of helium, and just regular tank of helium and start spraying? That's from like part or balloon helium. It works yeah. perfectly. Balloon so. warehouse. That's cool. <laughs> All right, Adam. Uh, yeah. Keep on working Tank on this. Gas. That's the idea. Yeah. All right. I love how you. I like how you, nothing will stop you. Like I'm just gonna keep going. Right. All you need it's is a multimeter and a tank of helium to solve most of the problems. I love it because you're, you're kind of like a reproducing like science from like 200 years ago. You're like, well, I don't have this two thousand dollar. No. It was actually uh, 1905, I want to say, when this thing was made. So, <laughs> no, it's a, uh, it's interesting. I'm learning a lot. Um, I had a couple of issues this week. I, I found a. Uh, giant short between high voltage and ground inside of one of my main supplies right before I turned it on. So that was kind of scary. But other than that, there's fuses. Yeah, no, 25 kV to ground. That's uh, yeah. horrifying. But horrifying. All right. We'll see you around. next week. Keep up the good yeah, work. All right. If you don't show up next week, we're going <laughs> to send an ambulance for you. <laughs> I'm, I have experience with high voltage before, but well, <laughs> I'm, I stay safe with it. Stay safe. He didn't, you. Get this, he didn't get this far unless he was careful. That's true. All right, we're going to go to Orlando, and then we'll wrap up with Rebecca, and then we're going to go. Hey, Orlando. Right, Orlando. Let me sit up real quick. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where are you? We're chill. That's all good. That's something else while I was preparing. So I've been working on a what I'm calling a mood badge. I don't really love that name, but um, but I'm working with this initiative called Maker Therapy. So they're bringing maker spaces to children's hospitals and things like that. Uh, so this is a guy I knew back at Vanderbilt, so I'm deciding to start making some cards for them. So what they look is kind of a mood badge. Oftentimes with kids, um, nurses are going back and forth into their room, and that gets really, really annoying. So the idea of this mood badge is they can display whatever mood through an emoji. Um, That's cool. They know to either, okay, leave them alone or hurry up and get out and things like that. Uh, so the basic idea at the moment will probably just have an 8x8 LED matrix. So it kind of looked like a form of the maybe the RG boy, And so... I'm also thinking about adding games and things like heart rate monitoring and activity monitoring because even when they're in the hospital, the well, big problem is they become sedentary. You know, they just yeah. sit and don't really want to do anything. Uh, so, yeah, so I'll just kind of show you real quick what that like looks Tamagotchi like. like where you have to keep doing activity to keep a little thing alive or something. I think that's a great idea, yes. I'm hoping to, to, mm -hmm. to implement something like that as well. All right, so let me know when you can see. Can you see this screen? It looks like an eagle schematic. Yeah. It looks right, like sweet. an eagle so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so basically, I'll be using Arduino. I, I might switch to NRF52 so I can get some Bluetooth stuff. But right now, just for proof of concept, I'll use the Atmega328. You got the LED matrix here and a ton of buttons. <laughs> so the buttons, I'm trying to also put games on it as well. So, you know, upright, left, down, those kind of things. So, so they can also entertain themselves as well. And uh, right now, the, um, what's it called? What's it called? What's it called? Ooh, I have a ton of screenshots. Well, it's kind of messy <laughs> when you're first starting to organize something, but I imagine you know, the display just being in the middle and the buttons down here, almost like a Game Boy Color. I went with a game, the LED matrix just because I've done it before for this kind of thing. It'd just be a little different, I guess. You know, a lot of people are kind of just using the 
but at that point, you know, you might as well just buy them a Game Boy. So I just kind of want to do something a little different. Yeah, you can look at the, um, we have a watch uh, yeah. kit, and it uses the same chip. And um, we have code that does dithering and stuff. So if you use our pinout, you can reuse our library. But yeah, I've actually seen that watch, and I'm planning on buying it at some point. So yeah, okay. thank you. No, but the, the files are up. You don't have to buy it. Just, just We'll also send it. you one. Um, thanks for doing this and helping out the kids. Um, you know, I was also thinking maybe it could be a little plant. That activity keeps the plant growing, so it's not at like, a, you know, like a, <laughs> like the, a dismal little dead digital creature. Maybe it could be a plant or something. So you have to water it by moving around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. I like it. All right. Yeah. That's so you know. That's that's and Rebecca. Hey, welcome back. Welcome back. Hey. Um. So I've been really busy lately, and I've had a lot of homework. Um. So to de-stress from homework, I did some pottery. Um. Oh, nice. Neat. Yeah, but that's actually not why I'm here. Um, so <laughs> too bad it's uh, going on the we, we the do list. like pottery projects, so like whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I actually just got a 3D printer. I, I got a little M3D um, on on Sunday. Yeah, it was a birthday gift um, that came early, and I wasn't supposed to know it came in, but someone told me anyway. Um, it's a secret. Uh, yeah, super secret. Um, but that's been really cool. I've been playing around with that, and I've made uh, a couple of these. Oh, there it is. Little tiny octopus wearing a hot uh, top hat. Oh, neat. Um, because it was cute. Uh, but speaking of homework, I have homework with me. Um, so in my engineering class, we're doing smart products, and my group is deciding to do a self-watering planter, and um, a group member who has since left the group, ordered all the parts and ordered really bad parts. So I've been trying to figure out how they work. And this is a really low quality moisture, uh, soy moisture sensor that was found on Amazon somewhere because they were cheap. Um, and well, we got what we paid for because uh, they're really inaccurate. Um, but they work well enough because we don't really care what the actual value is. We care if the plant is dying because the soil is dry. Um, so I have that and I have it hooked up to a circuit playground right now and because it's dry there's a green light on and I was lazy and didn't want to turn them all on, all the lights on. I'll be adding more to that in the coming weeks because that's due May 4th and it needs to be done by then. Um, and I also have this um, fluid tape sensor oh, yeah. uh, that I will figure out how it works by reading all the stuff that's on your website because I haven't looked at it yet. Um, I just got these parts. Uh, hey. All right, we'll come back with, uh, with the demo once you get it working. Yeah, I will. Also, I got I got the book you guys sent me, Sweet. and I started reading the very beginning of it, um, but I haven't actually gotten much farther than the prologue. So you can always put off homework. Um, later. Yeah. Well, that that means you can enjoy the book for much longer. Yeah. Yeah, or I can enjoy my homework for much longer by putting it off until tomorrow. <laughs> Outstanding. Uh, all right. Well, thank you so yeah. much, Rebecca. Okay. Well, all right. You can, uh, if you want a biohacking um, badge instead of a show and tell sticker, just uh, put that when you email supportedatafruit.com. See, she's got a plant water for her plant. All right. You got to combine right. projects. And when kids they are active and will automatically water the plant. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Epic show and tell. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Orlando. Thank you, Don Pedro. Thank you, JP. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Chris. And thank you, Adam. I think Eric and Chris should get together and have like the dead mouse helmet on the dancers. Yes. That would be pretty sweet. Singing queen songs. Singing queen. Uh, I want to ride my bicycle. I would we'll, um, we watch that. All right. We're gonna, we'll see everyone uh, yeah. at Ask an Engineer in a few minutes. Thank you, everyone, for making it the best half an hour of our life every single week, um, sharing projects and um, helping people. Uh, thank you for making the show and tell what it is. We'll see everyone in a couple minutes, and uh, see you next week. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.